21-year-old Mapuche Brandon Enriquez Huentecol was brought up to respect Chilean institutions, including the police. That is, until the day four years ago, when a special forces officer shot him in the back at Point Blank Range, in front of his house, for no apparent reason. I remember all our dogs ran up to me and started licking my blood off the floor like an animal. I could see the hole in my back. That's when I fainted. 17 operations later, he's still carrying more than 100 lead pellets in his body. Yet, what has most enraged the family is the fact that the offending officer is still free, despite all the evidence against him. Now, Brandon's once docile Mapuche mother has become a tireless activist. Four months ago, the family took over 200 hectares of this land that legally belongs to a Chilean family. Rather than fight, the owners let the Mapuche family stay. There's no equality or justice for the Mapuche. Here there's only justice for the rich and powerful. This land recovery is a way to compensate for the damage they've done. Many are afraid to do this, but we Mapuches have thick skins to resist all the persecutions and humiliations. Brandon is by no means the only Mapuche who's been wrongfully shot, killed or imprisoned by police. Centuries of injustice and discrimination are feeding a Mapuche rebellion. And armed groups are increasingly resorting to violence to expel those whom they say have usurped their land and driven them into poverty. Nearly 140 years ago, the Chilean state recognized the Mapuche's ownership of much of this territory through land titles called Titulos de Merced. Today, most Chileans believe it's too late to turn the clock back and return the land to the Mapuches, which raises the all-important question. Is there any room for compromise so that the Chilean state and the Mapuches can coexist in peace? Aniceto Norin, an emblematic Mapuche lonco, or chief, was wrongfully imprisoned for five years under Chile's controversial anti-terrorism law. Today, he condemns the violence carried out by whom he calls a minority of Mapuche radicals. What lies ahead is terrible. No one says it. But this violence, the killing of innocent people, will bring sorrow and more poverty to all of us. The divisions amongst us are tragedy, but we must do our best. While rival Mapuches protested outside, accusing Norin of betrayal, he and other Loncos met state officials last week to present a 12-point list of demands. They include recognition of the Mapuche language, culture, social order, and autonomy in their territory. The current constitution doesn't recognize indigenous people's existence. But next month, Chileans are almost certain to approve the creation of a new constitution, which could pave the way for significant changes. Hopefully, a new constitution, if it recognizes Chile's indigenous people, will help, but it won't guarantee respect, which is very different, but it's an important step. The Mapuche and children's rights activist believes teaching Chileans to recognize and respect Mapuche history and culture are key. But while there's growing public support for the Mapuche cause, distrust of the Chilean state and its institutions remain deep-rooted. How much both sides are willing to concede, especially on the crucial issue of land ownership, will determine whether or not there can be peace in this volatile region. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Coyipuye, Chile.